Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the first romance book that I have been reading in my challenge I set for myself to read romance books during this week leading up to Valentine's Day. So I am not a big romance reader, just want to put that out going in here, but I'm trying to give these books a honest try as I go into this holiday to celebrate all things love and romance. So the first book that I read in this challenge is Racked and Stacked, a blacktop cowboy's novel by Laura Lay James. And this is what the cover looks like. There's a man, he's rolling up his sleeves, he's ready to get down to business. Here we are. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm not a romance reader, but I'm trying to go into these books with a lot of with an open mind and trying to give them a fair shot because I feel like they deserve a fair shot. I also feel like with the proliferation of subgenres within romance, there has to be something in there that I like. I'm a voracious reader. I love reading basically everything else except for horror because that's too scary. So romance has to have something that I like and I just assume that I haven't found it yet. So I'm trying to read a variety of romance throughout this week. I don't think Racked and Stacked was for me. First of all, this book was part of the Blacktop Cowboys novel, or it's a Blacktop Cowboys novel, is part of the Blacktop <laughs> Black Top Cowboys series, which I'm assuming I don't have to read these in order, but maybe that contributed to my dislike of the book, but there is quite a number of them. So I pulled them up on my phone, the Black Top Cowboys series, and they include Corralled, Saddled and Spurred, Wrangled and Tangled, One Night Rodeo, Turn and Burn, Hillbilly Rockstar, Roped In, Stripped Down, Wrapped and Strapped, Strung Up, Hang Tough, Tripped Out, Racked and Stacked, and Wound Tight, which is really where I stopped reading because Wound Tight is Rough Riders number 16.75, but Black Top Cowboys 9.5, in which case the plot's gone completely off the rails and I have no idea what's going on. So there are more spun out. Um, I think that's the last one, but this is part of a series I read number nine in the series and I'm not sure if I needed to read the previous ones or if that contributed to my dislike. So this book follows two main characters, our love interests, and they are Larissa, who's known as Riss throughout the books, and Ike. And I assume this is Ike and not one of the other cowboy people who is in the book. This takes place in Wyoming, so out west. Um, Wyoming is this purple square. Oh, it's outside of my <laughs> camera frame. It's out west and they're doing cowboy things. Yeah. Um, Larissa is, as advertised on the back of the book, a tomboy. And as a certified tomboy myself, someone who was very much a tomboy as a little girl and never really grew out of that as an adult, I was like, we'll see if she's a tomboy. And I took issue with that. And then we have Ike, who he has some career issues. That's basically all that I know about him. He, his career's in tangles, his business is failing. There's this guy named Hugh who is his business partner that things are going south. So Larissa, the tomboy. One of the reasons I think she's portrayed as a tomboy is because she's standoffish and she doesn't want to date anyone. And she's really rough and gruff and has this tough exterior um, and she drives trucks, but I don't think being mean to other people and then being childish in your interactions makes you a tomboy. And I feel like that's what they were presented as. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I just felt like them, I feel like they could have left that label off everything. And also I just feel like Larissa wasn't really a nice or mature person. And that's what I'm gonna say about the characters. But I'm trying to use some of my vocabulary that I learned in reading about romance and I think some of the tropes at play here are the enemies to lovers. So Larissa and Ike start with by hating each other. And I say hating each other and enemies to lovers because I don't really know if they were ever enemies. I am not gonna come on here and claim to be a dating guru or a romance guru, but um, if you're like heavily flirting and making lots of like sexy little jokes with someone, um, you're probably not enemies just a hunch. So at the beginning they're supposed to be enemies and they're at this wedding together and a bunch of people at the wedding keep assuming that they're a couple and they're acting very, like they're flirting heavily. They are flirting heavily. So I don't really know why they are confused at the, 
maybe like it's they're not supposed to know their feelings for one another yet but they're supposed they're acting like they really hate each other but i never really understood why there was some miscommunication with her brother which is another huge thing that i do not like in romance books where no one talks to one another and they just all they take the first thing they see or know as absolute truth comes to find out she's not even she doesn't always believe her brothers or her brothers aren't always the best people so i don't know why she took their word for truth about ike but they are hating each other while flirting heavily and like can't keep their hands off each other basically so in the course of events, Larissa or Riss breaks her arm doing something. I don't remember what. I think she was like trying to fix a pipe or something. And this is where the trope forced proximity, I think. I think that's like the trope it would fall into. I think that's one that I read. And that's where they're forced to spend a bunch of time together. So Larissa breaks her arm and her brothers are taking care of her. But then Ike swoops in and is like, you're coming to my house. And of course he has to bathe her of course but nothing actually happens during the bath scene and like 20 minutes later her aunt comes over to help her shampoo her hair so what i'm wondering is why ike didn't just let the aunt come over to bathe her and just speaking for myself personally if i just broke my arm and i'm not capable of giving myself a bath first of all it's just one arm so you think that you could i know you have to wrap it up in like a bag so make sure there's no water on it but i feel like i could give myself a sponge bath in a pinch but even if i'm super into a guy i'm probably not gonna let them give me a sponge bath i'm probably going to call my aunt or call literally anyone else to help me take care of myself not the guy that i'm interested in so that just felt weird but it was one of those weird things where you know plot convenience so ta-da here we are and then they're forced to spend a bunch of time together and one thing leads to another and i wonder how this is gonna end but now let's talk about some things that i thought about the book um first the level of spice uh, really stays very stagnant for a while. So we get like the sexual tension right away when they're enemies, but they're not really enemies. So that wasn't really a convincing, a convincing theme in the book, but they're enemies and they're fighting, even though they just can't keep their hands off each other. But that's where the sexual tension stays for about 250 of the 300 pages. Like we don't actually get to any actual spice or fun until like 250 pages in to the point where I was like 200 pages in thinking where is this going or are we gonna get a sex scene I don't know like this is going nowhere and then from page about 250 to 300 about the end of the book they just crammed a bunch in there I believe I read either on some author profile that this also fits into erotic um yeah um I don't know if I agree with that because the first sex scene in my opinion was kind of ho-hum. Just gonna put it there. It was like, eh, it didn't really do anything for me. I was like, okay. And like they got better at the, the, the multiple that they crammed from page 250 to 300. It was honestly impressive how many they could cram into 50 pages. Uh, they, I mean the author. But I was like, for someone who writes erotic romance, at least that's what one of the author profiles said this was, you think you'd be better at this. Um, and I don't mean that as a, I don't know, I kind of do mean that as a slight to Laura Lee James, but I'm sure she has millions of fans. This is <clears throat> book nine in a series. So Laura Lee James is doing fine without my commentary. Um, but they just crammed a lot in the last 50 pages. And I remember thinking we went from like here to he like here with no context, except for that they were now dating. Oh yeah, big spoiler, they wind up together. Uh... There was a lot of my usual pet peeves with romance in this book. People just don't talk about their problems. There's always this like breakup or problem I feel like that happens in the last 50 pages, which there was, but I feel like it was just Larissa being childish again and being childish and aggressive and not handling your problems is not what being a tomboy is a, like about. I feel like they continually try to chalk her behavior up to that and that just didn't sit right with me. They just didn't communicate. She like stormed off because her so his like sisters showed up and were like we don't like you dating larissa and larissa who's supposed to be a grown woman who's supposed to have her like life pulled together and be really self-confident just like runs off and storms off and hides his like truck keys it just feels very petty and stupid and if i was ike i would be thinking 
where's your maturity but apparently I don't know he feels really bad about it and it's this whole thing and she's like you put your sisters before me which is like super petty and he wasn't even really doing that I feel like they just needed to communicate um but of course everything gets resolved because it's a romance book and everything has to be resolved or at least in these they have to be resolved and yeah so the front of this book says Lorelei James knows how to write one hot sexy cowboy and I don't know if I agree with that statement because Ike was just such a blank canvas. It just felt like throw whatever man you would like to imagine up on this canvas. Pretend to be Larissa because you have some quirky characteristic like you don't use a purse. I don't know if that's quirky. I don't use a purse either. Does that make me special? Will that make Ike fall for me? I don't know. But it just was... <sighs> Did not like it. Overall, this book was not for me. This was my first introduction into this week of reading romance and it was probably not a good one. I did not enjoy it. I thought it was just dumb. It did read very fast, which was one of the only good aspects of this book. And I would probably give this a one star. I did not like Larissa. I don't know anything about Ike other than he is a hot cowboy. Everything felt crammed in the last 50 pages. I felt like it was a big long drag out with just sexual tension while the author was trying to convince me that they were enemies. I feel like Larissa was very childish. There was a lot of things that could have just been solved by communication. It didn't feel realistic. And I am trying to suspend my disbelief in reading these, but I just couldn't suspend it forever. So overall, this was not the book for me. Now, if you like romance, if you want some Western romance, um, theoretically erotic, fiction this might be the book for you Lorelei James might be the book for you or might be the author for you so I'm sure she has her fans because she's written so many books but this was unfortunately not one for me and this is going to get a very rare one star I do not give out one stars very often but this was pretty bad and I was pretty annoyed and I was taking um lots of time to send pictures of certain lines in the book to like my sisters to make fun of it so not the book for me unfortunately I'm gonna have to pass on this one and probably future Lorelei James unless someone can recommend a book by her that you think I would enjoy so let me know what your opinion of this book is if you've read anything else in this series or what you think of this author let me know if I'm way off base or I just picked the wrong book to start with I'm still reading the rest of the romance books I'm committing to this and I know that there's a wide variety within romance. I actually, I'm a little bit cheating. I'm halfway through my next romance book, um, the Tessa Dare one, and that one is much better uh, comparatively to this one. So it does get better, I know it, but this one was just not for me, and I will be returning that one to the library when we are done with this and never checking out a Lorelei James book again if I can help it. So that was my review of Racked and Stacked by Lorelei James. By the way, I never knew what the title was about. Still didn't figure it out, but here we are. Let me know what you think. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.